الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين حياكم الله بفرس May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a similar gathering in Jannah. You're all wrong. You're all wrong. Saying inshallah that means if he will, if Allah will. But saying ameen is affirming your need to him. To affirm your need to him you don't say inshallah. You know what it means inshallah? If you will do. But if you don't, don't will. If someone, someone is very needy, desperately in need, please give me. If you like. How can you say if you like? And you, are, you have a great desperate need for him to give you. <coughs> yeah. So this is a notice inshallah. I like many times if I see any thing that I would like to correct, I do. And that is that is our, our task, obligation. Continuing the delightful topic about the excellent merits and characters of the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi Is that what we do? That's wrong. No, that's wrong. Who fabricated this? The Ahmad the Railway. Ahmad the Railway. He said, it has been narrated not authentically but weak. By, narrated by Musnad al Firdaus. That the, that the Prophet said, whenever you mention me, put your hand, etc., etc. And there are people who've been doing it for 50, 60, 70 years and they have eyes problems. They kept doing it and nothing happened. No change. No improvement. <laughs> I checked Musnad al-Firdaus and I found nothing in it. He said, Musnad al-Firdaus. I went to Musnad al-Firdaus. There's nothing. I read it from A to Z to find this so-called duration. What he did is, he said that a Sakhawi, Sakhawi is the student of Ibn Hajar. He mentioned that in one of his books. Now I forgot the book. I can bring it. I can bring the, the name of the book. In his book, he said, narrated by Musa al Firdaus. Yeah, okay. That's a mistake of him. He said, Musa, I went to Musa al Firdaus, and there is nothing. So it is fabricated. It's not weak. Look, when people get used to something, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he, got, he, he was grew up, he was born in a pagan society. <coughs> and he was not uh, saying, it's okay, you know, our community, how can we go, how can you go against them, it's okay. He didn't, uh, he didn't say that. He was struggling against that. Anyway, narrated, let's mute our... Uh, yeah. Let's go on the topic. We reached yesterday the ayah, but we did not elaborate on it. Ya ayyuha al-rasoolu balligh ma unzila ilayka min rabbik wa in lam taf'al fama ballagta risalata wallahu ya'asimuk. Do you remember the continuation of the ayah? Wallahu yasimuk. No one? Try, try. Wallahu yasimuk. You don't remember it? No one? No. That's too bad. Huh? Minanas. Minanas. Why did I do that? I have something in mind. You know, do you hear people talking, is Prophet Masum or not Masum? Have you heard of the word masoon? Yes. What does it mean to you, masoon? It's no masoon. What's the meaning of masoon? Masoon means is like uh, innocent. Innocent. It do do the 
No guna ah. for him. He doesn't sin. He doesn't sin. No mistake. Right. No he doesn't mistake. mistake. Hmm. Yeah. That's why I stopped at Yasimuk. Because if Allah wanted this meaning, why did He say in Nas? I'm gonna translate the ayah. <coughs> oh Messenger, <coughs> convey, Bella, what had been revealed to you from your Lord. For if you do not do, you have not conveyed his message. Wallahu ya'asimuka minal nas. And Allah protects you, prevents you from people. If Allah wanted it to be the meaning, Wallahu ya'asimuka, that means Allah make you sinless. Then why did he mention minal nas from people? Did you get my point? So what's the meaning of ya'asimuka minal nas? That means Allah prevent you from the harm of people. You you convey. You convey and Allah will protect you. This is a lesson to us. How many people want to convey and they say, mm, later, doesn't, uh, it's not adequate for your, uh, for your uh, circumstances, personal circumstances. It's not accurate. Mm, later. How many? A lot. When you are on the process of serving your Lord, conveying His message, you should have no fears. You are in the blessing of Allah's protection and no harm occurs to you, but it's better for you. But you have to deal wisely. Some people miss to be wise. Hmm. So, بلغ, convey, Wallahu ya'asimuka minal nas And Allah protects you from people You know that the Prophet used to be having guards And as this ayah was revealed to him He went out of the tent and said to the people Oh you, oh people Get back to your families Allah promised to protect me Get back home That is why the Prophet was so much reassured even at the time when people are surrounding him to kill him. Any event of assassination or killing, the Prophet was so reassured after this ayah, even before it. If يَقُولُ صَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعْنَا But this ayah gave him a guarantee. No people are going to harm you. Carry on the conveying of your message. That is why I mentioned to you yesterday the story of the Jewish woman. Prepared, shat, sheep, full of poison. And she invited the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As the Prophet started to eat. Half or quarter of a bite was swollen. Suddenly he said to his companions, Stop! This sheep is telling me that it contains poison. This sheep is telling me. But it was too late for two companions. They took one bite. As they took one bite, they instantly died. The Prophet was affected by the small bite that smuggled in his stomach. And he kept suffering the pains of that small, small bite until he died. He said to Aisha, Ya Aisha, ma ziltu ajidu alama asum fi batni. I kept suffering the pains of that poison in my stomach. And that remained with him until he died, I thought of self. So he said to the woman, Ma hamalaki ala dhalik. He was so patient. People do evil in front of him and he says, What caused you to do this? Just like what he said to Hatib ibn Balta. He is a Badri. And he sent a message of warning to Quraysh that Muhammad is on his way to you. As the Prophet discovered the, the message, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him, 
he ordered Ali to go and check that message. It was taken by a woman as a post to Mecca. And how to Ibn Bata is a Badri person, and he, he witnessed Badr. He's a great companion. He's one of those whom Allah said, Oh people of Badr, do whatever you desire, for I have forgiven you. So the Prophet, you know, if if it was ISIS or something, kill him immediately. The Prophet said, I saw it was What what God, what motivated you to do that? Oh how did he said, Oh Rasulullah, don't rush. Don't rush on me. The Prophet wasn't rush. If he was a rush, he would have been killed already. Wallahi, O Messenger of Allah. I did not do it by a cause of hatred or kufr after Allah guided me to Islam. But there is none among you, O Muhajirin, O Rasulullah, O companions, but they have families in Mecca that are protected for the cause of tribalism in Mecca. Yani they have tribes, they belong to tribes. And other tribes don't dare to do anything to their family except me, my family in Mecca. And I'm afraid that they may do something to my family. And I know that in, sooner or later Allah will be granting you victory no matter what. So the Prophet left him. Then this woman, he said, Ma hamalaki ala dhal. What motivated you to do that? She said, Aradtu li aqtulak. I intended to kill you. Then the Prophet said, Ma kan Allahu li yusallitaki ali. Allah would have not been using, utilizing you, using you against me. No. Then the companion said, O oh, Rasulullah, should we kill her? He said, no. He said, no. SubhanAllah. That would bring a question. Hmm. The Jews are there. What are they supposed to be doing in, in, in Medina? Uh, why, don't you, why don't they go to Roma? Then they are people of business. They mean business. We know them. So why in Medina? <laughs> because their scriptures tell them that this is the man, the son of Kidar, the great, the great man, the promised man. You're gonna find him there on the mountains of Sila. And Jabal Sila is in Medina. You remember the story, the long story of Kabir Malik when he repented, I'm sure. The, Allah revealed an ayah of accepting his repentance and when that was revealed one man came and he was riding on his horse rapidly on the mountain of Sila and he was shouting O oh, Kaab Malik an ayah was revealed for your sake so the, the narration is it's in Muslim and Bukhari the narration says that this man was shouting on the mountain of Sila and the mountain of Sela is one of the signs in the books of the Jews until today. It's there. That th that great man, you'll meet him there. On the mountains of Sela. <coughs> oh, mountains of Sela. Have the good news of the appearance of that great man, the son of Kedar. Kedar is one of the sons of Ishmael. Kedar is the son of Ishmael. And that great man will be appearing there. So the Jews used to be patient regarding the fever of Medina. You know Medina was a, was a place of fever? You know that when Abu Bakr went to Medina and Bilal went to Medina, they both got sick and they had fever? Medina used to be the place of fever. And the Prophet wasallam supplicated Allah to, to move it away from Medina. And Allah did. So, despite this is a place of... I mean, even, even one of the people who came to, 
ثم ديار سيدنا الطفيل الطفيل ابن ابن عمرو from those tribe he came to the prophet and he said oh prophet do you want a, a great asylum a protective asylum for you the prophet said oh the place in those they used to be having an idol there no and the prophet preferred after he gave his word of coming to medina when he had a pledge by the by the ansar so he refused to go to those to the people of those so at tufail ibn amr he decided to come to medina and join with the uh, the prophet sallallahu he had one person with him his name is not known is not mentioned even in sahih muslim as he was suffering the difficulty of medina many people when they come to medina used to be having diseases it used to be a place of disease but Allah made it Tayba or Taba, both named by Allah. Both the word Munawwara is is a common name upon among people, but this is not the name given by Allah to Medina. Yathrib, according to Surah Al Ahzab, Taba or Tayba, Allah named it like that. The Prophet said that, and that is a Sahih Muslim that Allah named Medina. Taiba or Taba. So this man suffered the diseases in Medina and he couldn't bear it. He brought a knife and he hmm, slayed, injured him. Is that right? Slayed? Slayed. Yeah. That's yeah, he cut his nerves. Veins, veins, sorry. Veins here and here. And he kept bleeding until he died. At-Tufayl <laughs> saw him in the dream and said to him, What did Allah do to you? He said, Allah forgave me by my hijrah to Medina. Then he saw his hands as if they are wrapped. He said, well, What about the wrapping in your hands? He said, it's been said to me, we will not be fixing for you what you have spoiled and damaged by your hands. At-Tufayl went to the Prophet ﷺ and told him about that dream. The Prophet said, Allahumma waliyadayhi faghfir. Allahu Akbar. He said, oh Allah, and even to his hands, oh Allah, forgive. So it was a place of disease. But the Jews were patient. And you can, you can be amazed that those people, Arabian people, they could not bear the diseases in Mecca, in Medina, sorry. But the Jews were patient. What made them patient? They're, they are business people. Why they had to be all in Medina? Quraidha, Qaynuqa, Al-Nadir, three great Jewish tribes, they are sticking to Medina. Why is that? They were waiting for that messenger. But you know, there are many people, religious people. They are religious. But they want a prophet. A prophet, any prophet. They want a prophet to match their desires. If not, they're going to kill him. Or make campaigns against him. They have to influence that prophet to follow their desire. So that's why this Jewish woman wanted to kill him. In another narration, um, I did not really verify it. There was in another narration that she said, if you are a prophet, it won't harm you. But if you are a liar, then, then I'll be giving service to people. That they will be getting rid of you by your death. It's amazing that even... Even I mentioned to you yesterday that they used to be to pretending to be sneezing. They used to be attending his assembly, hoping that the Prophet says, Yarhamuk Allah. But the Prophet didn't say it to them. He said, Yahdikum Allah. So uh, he was so much reassured 
no matter what. It's been narrated in Muslim that the Prophet, he set himself with his companions in, in a certain valley full of uh, greens, full of greens. They slept. And there was a man who came step by step, <coughs> avoiding every companion, walking carefully, not to let anyone recognize him until he was able to reach to the Prophet Muhammad And the Prophet was hanging his sword on the tree. So the man took the sword and he put it on the neck of the Prophet while he's standing. And the Prophet was lying down. And he said, who can save you from me? So as the Prophet woke up and he looked at him like this, and the man was saying, who can, who can save you from me? What are, you, what are you going to do if that happened to you? No, 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 please, please. I give you whatever you want. Please don't do that. Uh, anything. Just don't kill me. Usually, and it's not wrong. But the Prophet replied and said, Allah. Who saved you from me? Allah. Second time, he repeated, who saves you? Who will be saving you from me? The Prophet ﷺ said, it's Allah. Then Jibreel came and threw him down. And the Prophet picked the sword, And he put the sword on the neck of that person. With, a, with his beautiful smile, he said to him, and you, who can save you from me? With his beautiful smile, the man said, be, the, be a better taker of the two who took that sword. That, that's with my explanation. But he said, Kun khayra akhid. Be a better taker. Yani, I have taken the sword and I was wrong. And you have, you have taken the sword and you are forbearing, pardoning person. So be better than me. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. <clears throat> the Prophet said, Do you want to become Muslim? He said, No. But I promise you, if my people will be fighting against you, I will never participate with them. Then the Prophet said to him, You can go. He forgave him. <coughs> to this extent, can anyone do it? If anyone reached to Pharaoh or one of those leaders, what's going to happen? Even the companions were terrified. They woke up and they saw the Prophet putting his sword on that man. And the Prophet is explaining what happened. He said to them, this man, he came until he reached to me and he took the sword and he put it on me. He was explaining to them. The companions were terrified about this. And the Prophet ﷺ forgave him. As this man went to his own people, he said to them, I came back to you from a person who is the best that my eyes had seen. <coughs> So he was feeling a great peace, even that peace, reassurance, will never be removed or moved away from his soul, even when people threaten him. In Mecca, <clears throat> as the Prophet was, used to be passing by, he saw a person, one man, Making a great maintenance, you know, the, you know the, your car should be having a history, right? So he had a good history for his horse, she horse. And he used to be a good rider. And he said to the Prophet ﷺ when he saw him, Do you know why I'm taking good care of that horse? He said, why? He said, someday I'm going to be killing you while riding it. 
Then the Prophet ﷺ said, but I'll be the one to do, inshallah. That's all. Period. In Uhud, while the morrow of the companions was about to be collapsed because suddenly they were taken by Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu anhu, <clears throat> that man was seen. His she horse was running just like a, a cheetah. You know the cheetah, the fastest uh, animal. With his sword with him, the Prophet saw him from far. As the Prophet recognized that he's on his way to him, he took a spear. And as the man approached, the Prophet threw the spear on him, and that was it. That was his end. He died. The companion said that we used to say, we used to believe that he was given والسلام, the power of 30 people. Rukana. Who's Rukana? Do you ever, anyone knows who's Rukana? No? Rukana was a key KO wrestler knocking down. No one could stand to fight, to wrestle with Rukana. But Rukana wanted to test the Prophet's power, to examine it. And he said, Oh Prophet, I want to wrestle with you. <clears throat> you wanted to, res to wrestle with the Prophet the Prophet wrestled with him and knocked him down and the man could not even make any move while the Prophet put him down. The Prophet was so strong, I saw it was so. Despite that, SubhanAllah, Anas says, I served the Prophet وسلم, for 10 years and my hand had never touched any silk, any harir or dibaj ever softer than the hand of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What a great creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him with. Very pardoning person, very forgiving, very soft, very lovely. Even the jariya, you know the jariya? The young girl, like your daughter, nine years, eight years. They used to be catching his hand and dragging him and he used to be doing this and he used to be what well, as he is he passes by if he saw kids he used to be the first to say salam alaikum to them despite the adab is that the young should be beginning in his salam taslim to the elder <coughs> he used to be remembering allah ala kulli ahyani. Some of us, sometimes they remember Allah, sometimes they remember songs, music, tones. And that happens sometimes when, uh, when we call some people, some companies and say, hold on the line please. And they put for you some music and suddenly you memorize that music, mashallah. And you find yourself suddenly repeating it. That happens. But the Prophet ﷺ, nothing was stopping the Prophet ﷺ from remembering Allah. Nothing. He died while he was how many years? How much he was? 63. 13 years in Mecca and 10 years in Medina. And a great deal of knowledge, libraries, treasures, various kinds of aspects of knowledge, all benefited from this small period of time. Usul fiqh, usul tafsir, usul etc. Usul, usul, usul. All these kinds of knowledges in 10 years, 13 years, teaching them. So he died when he was 60, 63. Subhanallah. 
Abu Bakr died while he was 63. Omar died while he was 63. All other same. He died while over his head was no more than 20 white pieces of hair. 20. They were counted. <clears throat> About his names. Muhammad. What else? Ahmed. Al-Mahi. The wiper of Kufr. Al-Hashir. People will be gathered next to his, te uh, to his feet. Next to his feet. And they will be seeing his significance and value at the Day of Judgment. How great will be the regret of those who used to be refusing him in life. Al-Aqib. Al-Aqib, there is no one after him. No prophet. He's the last. Nabiyu Rahma. Nabiyu Tawbah. According to Sahih Muslim. He said, this is my names. Among his names that he mentioned, Nabiyu Rahma, Nabiyu Tawbah. And also in Sahih Muslim, Wasammahu Allahu Raufan Rahima. Allah named him Rauf Rahim. Where is that? In which ayah? لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِدْتُمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمٌ To the believers, he is Ra'uf, he is Rahim. He used to be أَعْلَمُ النَّاسِ بِاللَّهِ وَأَشَدُّهُمْ مِّنْهُ خَشْيَةٌ He used to be the most knowing person about Allah and the most fearful to Allah among all people and this is what the Prophet said in new the narration is like this the Prophet did something and some of the companions said they said no no we don't it's not good to do that then the Prophet said he said what is the matter with some people they make it haram to do what I am doing. Wallahi inni la a'lamukum billahi. Wallahi inni la a'lamukum billahi. Wa ashadduhum minhu khashya. Wallahi I am the, the most knowledgeable, knowing, aware person about Allah and the most fearful one to Him or Him. He used to be laughing, but his laugh, his type of laugh was <coughs> smiling. And the most kind of extreme laugh is that with, when his nawajis are shown, as the companions describe. Mm -hmm. There will be a special, inshallah, next Saturday, inshallah. special lecture about Kana. It's about one hour and a half, he was. All, I have a list of he was. His characters, what he used to do, what he used to be looking like, etc. All of it. The title, this, um, yeah, one of the series of the merits of the Prophet Wasallam, he was. It will be titled like this, he was. Even when he gets angry, he smiles, Allahu Akbar. How can he do that? Uh, wallahi, if one of you, or you, or me, when you get angry, you can see, 20, 220 volt electricity on our face. <laughs> oh, Allah. When he gets angry, he smiles. A tough, blunt, harsh, hard person caught the Prophet like that. And the Prophet had a very thick coat. Seemed to be at that time winter season. He caught him like this. Until the Prophet's neck became red. And he said, Ya Muhammad! Subhanallah. Murli min maalillah alladhi andat. Give a command to the people from the money that Allah gave you to be given to me. What a harsh Then the Prophet 
Bahika, the Prophet laughed. Wa amara lahu bi And he ordered for him to be granted. What did he do? Bahik. May we not be deprived from the barakah of a person like this, <coughs> upon whom when he gets angry, he laughs and smiles. Allahu Akbar. That is, that is Rasulullah. Sallallahu Allahu Even when he, <coughs> subhanAllah, when he, some people behave rudely against him, he keeps patient. The water you be, you know, in a winter season, the water should be falling like this. And Zubair, Zubair's house, Zubair bin Awan, was here, and next to his house, there's a house of one of the Ansar. So as Zubair used to be uh, uh, blocking the rain to, cut, to pass through his house, and then it goes to the neighbor. And the neighbor didn't like it. He wanted the water only for himself. And that's, that's rude. The water is coming to you in any way. So uh, Zubair had a problem with this neighbor, and he went to the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet said to him, Isti ya Zubair. And he was saying to the man, why do you have to do that? The water is coming in any way to you. Why do you have to order your neighbor to, to, uh, to deprive your neighbor from it? Why? Then as he told Zubair to let the water pass, this, this man, I don't know if he's a hypocrite, Because among the Ansar, there are about 12 hypocrites. And this man may be one of them. So he said to the Prophet ﷺ, Isn't it but because he's your cousin? You're biased to him. As if he's saying, it means you're biased to him. Then the Prophet did not care about what he said. He, said. he repeated, Isqiya Zubair. But his face was, the color of his face was changed. That's all. The color of his face. This is, period. This is the end of the narration. Will that happen to a king, to a president, to a leader? That when people accuse him like this, nothing more than the changing of his, the color of his face is, is, is seen? That's all? Will they be reaching to this limit or they will be exceeding that limit? What is that? Yeah, this man will be in Khabarkana. You know the meaning of Khabarkana? Yeah, he will be something, an event in the past. He used to be existed. They'll be getting rid of him if, if that happened to a king or to a leader. To the Prophet, nothing more than changing the color of his face. His hair used to be reaching his shoulder. And it used to be passing by his ears like this. And uh, yeah, some people like it, especially those youth. If you ask him, why your hair is long? He said, that's Sunnah. Don't you know? Hey, hey Dad, don't you know that it's Sunnah? So I said to him, and this is the sunnah. Why don't I see it in you? <laughs> not, only, not only this one, but this one. <laughs> he chose, pick and choose. Huh? So he picked and chose this only. The problem, there are people whose hair is very hard. So when they grow it, it doesn't go down, it goes up. And they look horrible. Yani, I challenge any comb to pass by this hair, but it's going to be broken. I challenge any comb. And, and they shave it from here, and they make it big from here. I don't know. Maybe they don't have a mirror to watch. I'm going to donate money for them to watch themselves, just to see themselves on a mirror. How do they look like? The 
Prophet saw one person who shaved part of his head and he left the other, he said, Shave it all or leave it all. This is a model today. They shave everything here and they keep up like this. They remind you of this, they remind you of this ayah. طَلْعُهَا كَأَنَّهُ رُؤُوسُ الشَّيَاطِينَ Like the head, the head of the devil. They shouldn't. كَانَ إِذَا عَمِلَ عَمَلًا أَثْبَتَهُ عليه الصلاة والسلام When he used to do a good work, he used to be, make it uh, regular work. يعني fasting Monday and Thursday, خلاص. He keeps doing it. Without making it wajib on himself. Who among us can do that? Do something voluntary thing, regular, without making it obligatory on him. وَأَحَبُّ الْعَمَلِ إِلَيْهِ مَا دَاوَمَ عَلَيْهِ صَاحِبُهُ Yani the Prophet ﷺ, that the most beloved thing to him is what a person kept constantly doing. Qiyam, constantly Qiyam. Not once every... <laughs> or some others, from Ramadan to Ramadan only Qiyam. Other than that, خلاص. no more Qiyam. <clears throat> or, from Ramadan to Ramadan, no Qiyam. <sighs> كان إذا خير بين أمرين اختار أيسرهما ما لم يكن إثما فإذا كان إثما كان أبعد الناس منه. He was never given a choice between two things, but he used to be detecting, investigating what is easier between the both. So he selects what is easier, unless if it's haram, then he used to be the most distant person from it. This is the way of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. He used to, whenever he used to say to one, غفر الله لك. If he says that, عليه الصلاة والسلام, to someone, you know what it means? If he says to one, غفر الله لك, what does it mean? It means he is on his way to شهادة مرجدة. عامر رضي الله عنه, the Prophet sent him with a mission, and uh, he was a leader in, in the army. And uh, he saw Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. What a great companion is that, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. He wanted to confront that uh, kafir. And then Amr said to Abu Musa, Oh, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, I ask you by Allah, don't intervene, don't step on between me and Shahada. Let me be the one who confront him. Ya Allah. So Abu Musa left As he was fighting with him, this man injured him. And he started to bleed. Then Amr sent a postman to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa What was the message of, Rasool, uh, of that person? What is the message of Amr to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Ya Rasulullah, istaghfir li. Mention this narration to those who say to the Prophet, not only in the unseen, but after his death, Ya Rasulullah, istaghfirli. If this can be from remote place and uh, after the Prophet's death, etc., then why Amir sent a postman to the Prophet, and when he reached to him, he delivered the message to Rasulullah wasallam that Amir said, Oh, O Messenger of Allah, ask Allah to forgive me. Why? Then the Prophet took wudu and performed two rak'ah and raises, I don't know if the narration says he performed two rak'ah, astaghfirullah. I hope. And then he raised his hands and istaqbal al qibla, he took the direction of qibla and he said, Allahumma ghfir li ubaydika abi amir. Oh, his name is Abu Amir, not Amir. اللهم اجعله يوم القيامة فوق كثير من خلقك. Oh Allah, forgive your, as he said, tiny servant, small servant of yours, Abu Amr. Oh Allah, let him be at the day of judgment among a lot of your servants. Let him be over a lot of your servants at the day of judgment. 
Beautiful dua. Tell this narration which is in Sahih Muslim to those who say, it's okay, you can say, you know what, what, what people are falling, they're falling in shirk and shafa'ah. Mm -mm. Shafa'ah is against shirk. Yani those who fall in shirk, they are depriving themselves in fact from the shafa'ah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And yet they call themselves, we are Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And you are Mubtada'ah. He used والسلام, to be seeing Jannah and Nar. He said والسلام, in Sahih Muslim, عُرِضَتْ عَلَيَّ الْجَنَّةُ وَالنَّارُ آنِفًا فَلَمْ أَرَ فِي الْخَيْرِ وَالشَّرِّ مِثْلَ ذَلِكَ He said a while ago, Jannah and Hell were explored to me and I haven't seen any kind of evil and good ever greater than that. Wallahi, لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعْلَمْ Wallahi, if you know what I know, لَضَحِكْتُمْ قَلِيلًا You will be laughing but little. وَلَبَكَيْتُمْ كَثِيرًا and you'll be crying a lot. <laughs> Even <coughs> sometimes he used to be <coughs> exploring the punishment of grave. And the Prophet ﷺ said, "Laula anta dafalu, la saatu Allah an yusmi'akum min adab al qabr aladhi asma'. Have it not been the matter of burying one another between yourselves, I would have been asking Allah to let you hear from the punishment of the grave that I can hear now. You know, if people hear, halas, they will all, mashallah, be just like companions. But it, become, it will become what? A matter of shahada, not a matter of ghayb anymore. And that will be negating the whole concept and the reason why we are created. And that is the concept of testing us. In one miracle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِن نَشَأْ نُنَزِّلْ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ آيَةً فَظَلَّتْ أَعْنَاقُهُمْ لَهَا خَاضِعِينَ Had it been our will, we would have descending on, onto them an ayah, as a miracle, <coughs> which will, let, will, will, will make their heads bend it down for it. كان أشد حياء من العذراء في خدرها. He used to be more and more and more shying than a virgin teen in her house. Because, and this is indicative that those teens, teenagers, when they are virgins, they used to be huh, remaining in their houses. Unlike today. Unlike today, as you see outside. Which, uh, the, the, this narration is indicative to the great, to the beautiful character of the teenagers at that time. That they used to be at home. He <coughs> used to be passing by, <coughs> visiting, coming to the poor people and visiting them. Even in the fight, he used to be saying, "Abghuni du'afaakum, hal tunsaruna wa turzakuna illa bi du'afaakum, bi da'watihim, bi ikhlasihim." He used to be bringing sa'alik al muhajirin. Sa'aluk. What does the mean of sa'aluk? The poor. Sa'aluk is poor. In Arabic today, we use it to insult people. Rahi ya sa'aluk. Get off, you Saluk. They use it for insulting or belittling people. And Saluk means a poor man. That's what it means. So he used to be bringing the Sa'alik of Muhajirin and asking them, encouraging them to ask Allah to grant the army a victory. And he visited, he used to be visiting Umm Ayman. Oh. Umm Ayman. Umm Ayman is the mother of Zayd ibn Thabit. 
Um Ayman, an old Ethiopian woman. This count, the, sorry, despite the full schedule of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a leader for the Ummah, and Allah put under His responsibility the spreading of Islam to the whole world. That did not stop him from his, from regularizing his visit to Umm Ayman. To the extent that when Abu Bakr became the leader, he used to say to Umar, Come on, let's go visit Umm Ayman as the Prophet used to be visiting her. You know the story. Do you know the story of when, when both visited her and they saw her crying? <laughs> Abu Bakr and Umar visited Umm Ayman after the Prophet's death. <coughs> and they saw her crying. Then Abu Bakr said to her, Come on, Umm Ayman, why are you crying? Don't you know what don't you know that what Allah has now for his Prophet is better? She said, Wallahi, I'm not crying for that. I know that what Allah has for his Prophet now, that means in the next world, is better. But I'm crying for the termination of the revelation that used to be coming from the heaven unto earth. <clears throat> By the Prophet's death, no more blessed revelation from heaven unto earth for us. She was crying for that. And that encouraged them both, Abu Bakr and Umar, to cry. And they were crying with her. People used not to be beaten to stay away from him. Mm, that was not allowed to the Prophet so. yeah, By the Prophet, yani. he was not allowing this. <coughs> Unlike today, <coughs> if, a, if a leader passes by, get back, and they may even beat him or even kill him. Never get close. No, 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 no. That was not happening to the Prophet. كان الناس لا يضربون عنه. According to Sahih Muslim, people used not to be beaten up, to stay away from him. Never. Mm, he, do we still have time? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> he used to be, when he speaks, he used to be repeating his statement three times. So it will be understood from him. Some of the companions will be raising their voices in his presence, alayhi salatu wasalam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah. وَلَا تَرْفَعُوا أَصْوَاتَكُمْ فَوْقَ صَوْتِ النَّبِيِّ وَلَا تَجْهَرُوا لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ أَنْ تَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعَرُونَ O you who have believed, do not Raise your voices in the presence of Rasulullah. And don't raise your voices when you speak to him, just like the way you speak to one another. That you, your good deeds may be notified while you do not recognize. Thabit ibn Qais or Asim ibn Qais. Asim ibn Qais. No, 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 Thabit ibn Qais. He used to be having a Jahur voice. Jahur voice. Jahur. His Jahur, yani, very high voice. He, he used to be speaking to the Prophet like this. And when this ayah was revealed, he was seen sitting on the street crying, going like this. They said, what's wrong with you? He said, Allah revealed that ayah. And uh, I, I have a very high, big voice. And... I believe that my action is notified, cancelled already. I'm in hell. Khalas. So they went to the Prophet ﷺ and told him about him, that he's sitting on the street crying, believing that he, and hell is his. Khalas. Then the Prophet ﷺ said to them, No, but you go tell him that he is in Jannah. How beautiful is this? Allah. Then, Umar radiallahu anhu used to be speaking to the Prophet like this. After this ayah, the Prophet used to be saying to him, What? What did you say? Repeat, I didn't hear you. They used to be speaking to him just like secret. 
as you call it, uh, seclusion? Seclusion. Huh. Seclusion way of speech. They fear that this ayah may be huh, applied on them. <coughs> and the beautiful, even his voice, alayhi salatu was salam, was blessed. Even his voice, his very voice, was blessed. كان إذا تكلم تكلم بصوت لا يوقظ النائم ويسمع اليقظان. When he used to speak, he speaks in such voice that does not let the sleeping one wake up, but it lets the one who is awake hear clearly. This is a blessed voice. A blessed voice. الله أكبر. That has a story. Let me tell you the story. I don't know if we have time. Allah. <laughs> when you are bored of me, tell me please. When you fed up, tell me. Yeah. I have a problem. Sorry about that. Yeah. Al Maqdad ibn Amr. Al Maqdad is a Faris, a great rider. The great fighter, Rajil, while walking, I mean, fast in walking and fighting, who is, who is that companion? Salamat ibn al Akwa. The Prophet said in Sahih, Ikhul Sahih Muslim, In khayra Rajilina Salamat ibn al Akwa, wa khayr Farisina al Maqdad ibn Amr. Al Maqdad, radiallahu anhu. Al Maqdad ibn Amr, he, ha, he, he, uh, he was hungry and thirsty, and two other companions, they were very, extremely hungry and thirsty. He said, and to the extent that we, the senses of our hearing, and sight and, and the sighting is malfunctioning. We don't hear. We can't see anymore. <coughs> Can you imagine what kind of thirst and hunger reached with those three companions? The hunger malfunctioned the, sen the senses of hearing and seeing. And we passed by some companions to give us something they did not give us. Then we went to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Prophet had three sheep, and he said, "Ihtalibu هذه الأعنز الثلاثة بيننا." يعني juicing the milk of those three sheep, and let it be in share between us, the three, the three companions and Rasulullah. No, two companions with Al Muqdad. With Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, there are four. No, 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 three. Astaghfirullah. There are three with the Prophet. No, wait a minute. No, no, there are four with the Prophet. Three companions with the Prophet. There are four. So the Prophet said, "Juice the sheep. You know, the the, the 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 milk of that of these sheep. Let it be in share between us, the four. And it used to be regularly done." And always a, a, a cup of milk used to be put, prepared for the Prophet ﷺ. Whenever he comes, he take it and drink it. And, oh sorry, and drink it. I'm afraid you may use your left hand. So one night, Al-Maqdad ibn Amr, he took his share of the milk. But that, that was not enough to him. He wanted more and he was looking at the cup of Rasulullah Sallallahu He desired it. Then Shaitan said to him, Rasulullah will be hosted by many companions. That will not be affecting him. Go ahead, drink it. He took it and he drank it. And Maqdad ibn Amr said, the moment it reached to my stomach, naddamani ya shaitan. Shaitan started to whisper on me, regret and sorrow for doing this. And he said to me, he's narrating, that the devil said to him, 
how dare you took the portion of Rasulullah and now if he comes and found the cup empty he's gonna he may make dua on you and when he supplicates Allah against you you'll be perishing you will be you're gonna be losing your life and your hereafter what did you do he said I kept regretting regretting and I as I recognized the Prophet's stepping that he's on his way coming I covered myself with a blanket which was not enough if I cover my head my legs will be, sh will be shown if I cover my legs my head will be shown then then the Prophet said Assalamu Alaikum he said al maqdad said when he speaks he used to be speaking like this he doesn't his his voice doesn't wake huh the sleeping one but it lets the awake one hear this is the significance so as the prophet saw the cup empty what did he what did he do and Maghdad was expecting supplication against the prophet against the one who dared to take the portion of the Prophet. <coughs> but but uh, to the contrary, the Prophet said, Allahumma at'am man at'amani wa man saqani. Oh Allah, feed the one who fed me and grant drink to the one who granted me drink. And Maghdad ibn Amr, as he heard this, he moved immediately the blanket away from him. He went took the knife and he was testing uh, the fattest one among the three sheeps which one is fattest he took it he slaughtered it and he prepared it for the prophet ah oh, sorry sorry no 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 he's not slaughtering he bring uh, a milk immediately he juiced it and he brought, brought, brought the milk to the prophet then he said ya rasulullah ishrab o messenger of allah drink the Prophet said, what about the others? He said, Ya Rasulullah, Ishrab. The Prophet was saying, what about the others? The two other companions, they're sleeping. And Maghdad doesn't care about anything now. He wants the Prophet to drink. Because if the Prophet drank at that moment, that means his supplication will be applied to al Maghdad. See those companions. As, we, as they say today, they mean business. They mean business. This is their business. Now he's forcing the Prophet to drink. He wants, he wants the dua to be applied on him. Then the Prophet took. And look, this man was thinking about himself before. And look at the Prophet. He was thinking about the other companions. La ilaha illallah. So it was very interesting moment. Very uh, vital moment to, the, to this companion, al maqdad That the Prophet, even if he takes a small sip, Allah's the dua is is applied on him. The moment the Prophet drank and Maqdash started to laugh, ah, and you're laughing until he fell down on the ground. Allah. And he was rolling, laughing, he was so happy. The Prophet said, this is one of your weird behavior, O Maqdash. What are you doing? What is this? He said, Ya Rasulullah. Alhamdulillah, I'm very happy. Your supplication is applied on me now. And I'm so happy, that's why I was laughing. He said, then the Prophet again, he repeated, shouldn't you be taking the remaining of the, the milk and wake up uh, the other two companions to drink? He said, I don't care about them, whether they drink or not, <laughs> after your supplication was applied on me. I don't care, let them drink, let them not drink. I don't care. Allah. This is the Prophet very soft. We have to make people study and understand the Prophet's characters. <coughs> you can see the Prophet was so strict, was so kind, was so soft, was so spiritual. To copy him and when people, the outsiders recognize that we are reflecting the characters of the Prophet. Now you'll be seeing people 
becoming coming to Islam and they won't be caring about the media and Allah will be blessing us and by our blessings people be, will come to Islam uh -huh. tell me what is the effect of our existence now being amongst those people and they don't see nothing they don't see anything that really urge them to become Muslims except the contrary that they see cheating how many people they claim to be divorcing their wives to have two houses they cheat, they lie. And those, you see those people, it's okay for them to say, I don't believe in God. But it's not okay to catch you with a lie. <clears throat> Is it true? We'll have special lectures about, about this issue, inshallah. <coughs> but one of the things, one, one of what we are going to be ending with, inshallah. Have you ever read the story of the Roman Empire? Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. When he was investigating Abu Sufyan, that's in Sahih Bukhari. It's a long, I'm gonna read it to you someday. It's beautiful. One of the questions he was, he was interrogating Abu Sufyan, and Abu Sufyan at that time was Kafir. But there was a truce between him and the Prophet for 10 years, between Quraysh and the Prophet. So during that period of time, he was in Asham, Damascus. It's a long story, I'm not going to mention it, but I'll take one part of it. When the king of Rome was asking Abu Sufyan, Hal kana yaghdir? Was he cheating you? Abu Sufyan didn't like to lie, but he wanted to deform the Prophet. In way or another. But he has to say the truth. La. Ma kan yadir. Walakin. He said no. He is not to cheat. But. We are in a period of truth between us and him. Knowing what, what he is about to do. Abu Sufyan said this is the only thing that I had to enter. To enter in my speech. Wallahi. Had it not been a scandal that Quraysh will be blaming me that we caught with you someday that you lied, I would have been lying to the king of Roma and say to him that he is to be cheating. But he said the truth. But the only thing he added, he interfered, <coughs> he put, he penetrated, he said, no, he doesn't cheat. But we are in a period of truth between us and him, knowing what, what he's about to do. Maybe, maybe, as he's saying, maybe in the future he may cheat. But what we know that he didn't so far. Yes, the Prophet is never to cheat. And that is his character. Is that the character of the Muslims today? Unfortunately, no. But some of them, yes. I'm not saying 100% no. I know a brother, he's from Somalia. His beard is like this. And he's working in, in PC world. And I was wondering, I said to him, wait a minute, your beard is like this. Uh, I, I asked him because he told me that the manager of this big branch he's working with is a Jew. I said, he's a Jew? And he doesn't mind you having that? Uh, he said, he trusts me. To him, I'm trustworthy. And this branch suffered many thefts from those who used to be working. But he doesn't care about my religion, my beard. The, the most important thing with him is that I'm trustworthy. I will never be taking something that doesn't belong to me. Mm. Think, think it that way. If, if most, if not all, if most of the Muslims today <coughs> maintaining that character. Wallahi, those non-Muslims will not be giving any consideration to the media that deliberately or undeliberately they deform Islam. They will not be caring about because they will be saying, No, I have a good trustworthy neighbor. I have a good trustworthy worker. And this will help much people on coming to Islam. <coughs> let's, let's think about Malaysia, Indonesia. Indonesia is the greatest Muslim country ever. 
145, that is an, an old uh, statistic. 145 millions. How did Islam enter to them? Wallahi, there was no sword. By no sword. But by some people from Hadramaut, from Yemen, trustworthy businessmen. Not da'ya. Businessmen. People recognize their, their trustworthiness, their honesty, their truthfulness, and they accepted Islam because of that. Because of that. No sort took place. To be continued, inshallah, next Saturday. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu. Adhan? Go ahead.